Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. We're back at my friend Dean's place, SoCal Classic Car Storage, and we haven't been here in quite some time. This has been a long time coming, you guys. This is Gio. Gio brought out his Camaro for us. Number one, dude, thanks for bringing out your car no. to shoot with us today. Thanks for uh, having me. So we'll start with the questions that I have. Number one, when you bought the car, is it a clean Camaro that you get, or is it a, like what kind of condition are you in with what you start with? It was a build that was being worked on from Classic Hot Rod out of Power Media. It had a Chris Alton chassis. They had thrown in some different LSX engines. From there, we started taking it apart ourselves, and I was building a 454 engine and doing some other fabrication work on there. And you were doing some stuff yourself, right? Correct. That, that was, a, that was, I was at that point, I was still doing it all ourselves. Yeah. Between me, my wife, and my, my kids, you know, rolling around the wheels and yeah. jumping around everywhere trying to get focused. But uh, eventually, we decided to uh, didn't have the time and doing three, four hours here on weekends wasn't working out, so we decided just part it out, send it out, and we found a shop on uh, Wisconsin, Tony's Hot Rod Shop. Man, I gotta look this one up. Tony, sorry for not knowing your shop, dude, it, it, but I, I gotta look it up just based on what I see here, you know? I'm curious to see. Yeah, absolutely, and then we had a really good connection, good yeah. communication. We worked out the whole details of what we wanted for the engine, the specific build for even interior. We worked with uh, Kegler's Customs, so we worked with them doing the interior. My wife sort of worked out some of the designs that we already mm -hmm. had in plan. You know, one year down the road, we had the, the car completely finished, and we went out, picked it up, and never looked back since. Yeah. Enjoying it every weekend. Now, is it still the Chris Alston chassis? It, it's the, still the Chris Alston. It's a full it, chassis. It's oh, a it G-body. It's got the Chris Alston Fab 9 from uh, uh, Strange Engineering back end, 9-inch, Barry Shocks. Everything was, at least for the chassis, is from Chris Elson's chassis work. Well, let's pop the hood, dude, and we'll come back, because believe me, I want to talk about this, but let's, I'm curious to see inside the engine yeah. bay, because I definitely want to touch on this hood treatment, because I think it's just very, <laughs> very, very cool. Lots of hours of work, for sure. What'd you do engine-wise here? The engine's a LT5, it's a crate engine. It's a, what they put on the ZR9, so 2019. <laughs> yeah. And everything on the car is functional. So yeah. all the air scoops right into it, goes right into the intake. Where's it coming in from then? It's Does it, from, from the from sides. Up, from... Yeah, and it goes right here through the sides. Yeah. To the panel and goes feeds right into there. Got it, and so then, that's feeding cold air in. And again, for the hood as well, just feeding air into the engine bay. Mm -hmm. Full header is three inch going all the way to the back. So what are you making power-wise with this? Power-wise, I'd say we're pushing close to 800, 900 horsepower. We got some other upgrades, uh, trying to get to a thousand, just some of the Kitec headers and <laughs> doing the complete ECU so that I can actually fine tune everything yeah. and put different tunes in there. So that's coming hopefully next year, we ever bring it back. Yeah. Very simple. Everything that's what I was just gonna say, dude. I like, <laughs> I like actually, I was expecting because it's so, it's pretty dramatic exterior on the car, you know? Yes. I was expecting when you pop this open, it's gonna be the very, uh, how do I say it? The, the, the typical kind of show car thing where everything's gonna be pristine. Like like seeing these inner fenders here, this one has bend to it to make room for your- Power brake your... booster and everything mm -hmm. else that, that flows yeah. out to the side there, right? What's that? Is it a dry it's sump pump? Dry sump pump, yep. So these engines stock are dry, dry sump, sump, aren't they? That is yeah, correct, yeah, yes. Yeah, got it. Dude, very cool. <laughs> And you said you already have, give or take, about 1,100 miles on the car, so you're out it, driving and enjoying yeah, it. Yes, absolutely. One of the things we like to do is take out for a cruise to help to San Diego Carlsbad, or even down PCH. I'll take one of the kids on the weekend, and we'll take a cruise down the street or down the freeway with a big smile on their face. Yeah. Makes it all worth it. <laughs> That's what it's all dude. about. And I can see the underside of the hood, obviously, thought out to fit this into it, but still give opening. So, so I'm imagining this opening in the hood back here is to allow the hot air to get out. Exactly, correct. correct. Yeah. Dissipate all the air to get out of the, the engine bay. See, I love all those smart things that builders do, and I hate when they don't do those mm -hmm. smart things like that. Like, oh, we wanted the hood to fit nice and tight, and it looks great. Awesome, but now your hood's bowing because there's so much heat under there. Correct. I've personally seen that before, you know? I, I get it, it's a nine inch rear end. It's a strange yes. engineering. Yes. What's the rear suspension? Is that also part of the Alston it's stuff? It's part of the Alston stuff as well. It's uh, got all um, pivot, the sway bar. It's got four rear. link rear. Correct. It is, uh -huh. Very shock, I was trying to remember, the very shock springs and shock, so. It's a manual adjustment if need to. I like to tweak things, so it, it, it's yeah. worked out so great. 
It's cool with a car like this that you have the ability, that you have the mechanical understanding, that you can do it all yourself, especially your builders out in Wisconsin. Yes, absolutely. That's not around the corner. I've been fortunate where I've been able to do a lot of the work myself. What's the LT5 made up to transmission wise? It's made it to a TK56. It's a stage five, so it'll take about a thousand horsepowers or more. So that's why if we throw a little more horsepower, it should be able to handle everything. Great. And it's got a twin dual clutch. Nice. It, it, I mean, it responds. It's, it's very sensitive, but it yeah. works really nice. Well, let's drop the hood. Well, I want to talk about some, God, this is, oh, this is so bitching, dude. God, that fitment is slick. <laughs> and one thing I didn't touch on, I see the Willwood on the master. Is it, you yes. have Willwood, Willwood brakes all around, around the car? Yeah, uh -huh. four and six on the front piston. I'm guessing probably inch. pretty big brakes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So while we're on that stuff, because I want to get to the body, but I'm curious, like your wheel and tire setup, who are they? What sizes and stuff? Yeah, so the, the front are 18 inch. They have 245 35s and the back are 335 25s, I think. And they're also 18 inch, so Forge Line Grand Cape Series. Oh, it is, three, okay, yeah. Three piece. They make great wheels, don't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's one of those wheel yeah. companies you kind of know you can yeah. bank on it. Not only looking good, but it's functional. And their support as well. I ran into a couple things when I, I took them apart to actually get them powder coated after I got it back to match got the it. interior. Yeah. Their support is great as far as getting the torque or getting any any parts that you might need to put it to reassemble. Yeah. I mean, they're, they'll they give you all the guidance you need as well to, to make Dude, that happen. Dude, the color choice. So, so they came another color and then you had them powder coated to this color. Correct. We originally went with a black. So it was kind of like a mad black. My wife came up with the idea that we should have it match the interior. Yeah. So we went with more of a, like a bronze. On a weekend, the kids helped me out, took it apart, got it out to the powder coating and put them back on. Nice, and dude. It, and actually, I've gotten a lot of compliments to that is we don't even have to tell them, they'll notice that it actually matches the interior of the car, the yeah. leather. No, you, so see it tie, you see it tie together and it also, in my opinion, it helps to tie in with the red, you know? The yes. red by itself would have maybe looked a little... Stand out or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm curious, because I was telling you before we got started today, we shot a car a while back, my friend Dustin from Nostalgia Hot Rods, same 69 Camaro, and he had a single stripe on the left side of the car, and people were losing their mind. They couldn't believe <laughs> that somebody would do that. I get a lot of shit, like, oh, oh what, sure. what, are you, what are you trying to do, a like European style? I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're gonna hear from some of these guys, because um, they're gonna go, why? Uh, yeah, why would you do that? Was this a design concept of yours? It, it was one of our design concepts. Uh -huh. we, we originally had three different designs. We had either on the right or the passenger side, and then with the dual stripes. One of our kids said, okay, we're, we have another build coming as well. We want to do the same color, put the stripe on the other side, and they complete each other. Cool. And that was their, their concept, and we are like, hey, I, I, I always like the one stripe, and we went against what everyone voted for. And it, it, we, it looks great. It, we, no regrets. It actually looks really nice. Is there any widening done on this? I believe the rear might have been widened, the, the, the front is the still stock. stock. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. It's just funny, yeah. Camaro's already had a pretty nice, nice flare front to the front and rear on yeah. it. They really do, man. Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. on the back, they, they find it a little bit, and I know they did some work as well as in the rear balance to tuck the bumpers in. So they had to do a little bit of work and also for the, sure. for the bottom balance. I mean, obviously, I see this bumper's tucked, tucked hard. In. When yeah. I walked around the back of the car before, I noticed it really tucked. Yes. And I also, this is another one of those things, man. The simple little chin spoiler here, mm -hmm. in my opinion, looks really slick rather than some trick. Like, I, 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 I love those, but at the same time, you start to lose the Camaro. Yes. You know? Yes. And I'm guessing if you started with a 69 Camaro, you probably have a reason for it. Yes, it, it's a car I, as a kid, I always wanted to have. Same Got thing it. with the 63 Corvette is I originally had a plan to do an OS build and now we're doing a rest of mod with it. But we want to try to stay as close to the original look. Yeah, but you're going to have your two dream cars then. Yes, absolutely. Dude, good for <laughs> you, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still working on it, bro. Uh, <laughs> So this hood treatment here was the first thing that stood out when I saw the car. This is functional, right? It's yes, all the feed air. That's correct. And I don't know the number of hours it take. Uh, Tony would probably know the number, but <laughs> I'll bet. I, I think they took two different hoods to make this one together. I believe uh, it. they pieced it together. They would send me some models. And I'm like, that looks good. We'll keep doing what you're doing. I mean, that it, apocalypse. Is that your, that's the name we gave with, with that? Yeah, it was, it was during COVID. It seemed fitting. So we decided Apocalypse. Uh... Apocalypse is awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. So this is what I saw when we pulled up because your car was parked nose in in the parking space. Dude, the rear look on this, to go through the work they do on the lower valance to bring yes. the exhaust through that, that's just, oh, and there's a and mild there's a diffuser, diffuser work diffuser on in the there. bottom too, yes. Boy, and you really get to see the meaty back tire there, huh? Oh yeah. That looks yeah, there's a, a stance when you take a picture out of the back, the stance, it's just yeah. It's impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, 
The other thing I noticed uh, when you started to back up and, and move the car was, although they look close to a stock tail light on here, somehow they, they feather fact. out like that and, yeah. and they light really brightly and stuff. Super slick, dude. This car is nice, man. This car is really... I appreciate it. It's funny to me too, because I'll be honest with you, dude, I love, I love a 69 Camaro and at the same time I go, does anybody really need to build another one? Because there's a <laughs> lot of custom 69 Camaros out there. But then every time I see one that's done like this, where it's really tasteful, there's personal choices that you and your family have obviously brought into play with it. Every single time I do the same thing, I forget that it's a 69 Camaro and I just go, wow, bitchin' car. It's key, because I, I do see a lot of the 69 Camaros, but yeah. it's it's whenever you you see that personal touch yeah. or caring of it, you could tell the differences of the all differences. And I, that, that's what we're trying to show out here. Well. See, I swear, I love all the choices that are made in a custom build, you know what I mean? Even from, do you do a spoiler or do you not do a spoiler? Right. Do you do the chins? All, all the choices that are made. And the handles, I also noticed yeah. this. Kindig handles, uh, deleted the, also the, all the rails on the, on the front side. Sure and did, everything yeah. Else. She, I can't believe I just noticed that. Not to mention flush glass. Flush glass, yes. That's one that people lean on a lot, and I get it. That, that flush look is, it's a hit or miss. Like I, more and more lately, I'm finding myself falling in love with seeing door handles again, yes. you know? But there, you think about it, there was that era where, like the era of Boyd Coddington, right? In early days of Foose where it was shave. Yeah, shave the handles, shave no yeah. handles at all. So you bought this car at the be like in the beginning era of COVID and then it went I, to- I, I bought it in 2016. It, it actually, I tried it for about two years and then it sat Got out it. for a year. COVID hit and- we, Got it. Perfect opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make it happen. Dude, wild interior. This is such personal choice stuff. Yeah. Down like to the all stitching. the diamond stitch, yes. the wood grain that's worked in here. And I noticed you even have it back here on the uh, speakers, on the speakers. In the center. Yeah. Yeah, it's a CTSV interior. It's uh, the oh, headrest really? been trimmed off. Yeah, and it's got fit into work, even the center console. The, Come the actual on. gauges are original. Come on. That's from a CTSV? Yes. Even the door panels? Uh, door panels, no, the door panels are, yeah. are still original. It's just a wild choice you guys did here, this distressed leather. Yeah, it's uh, relic leathers, it's uh, amber glow, is the color of the leather. Yeah. Very like bomber jacket look. Yeah, I, I'll give the credit there to my wife. She got the design on Dem, Dem sure. she put it on paper and sure. sent it over to the builder and they got it all figured out. Or is that yeah. Dakota Digital? Dakota Digital, correct. It seems like, I hate to say it to any other company out there, but that has become the gauge company, yeah. right? Yeah. So a lot of your dash here then is still stock. That is still stock, absolutely. It retrofitted to use a vintage air, still using the stock vents and everything else. Changed the head unit, obviously, their full display. What are uh, these windows. From? Yeah, no, the, I figured the, windows, but what yes. is, do you know what the switch is from? It's, that's I, not CTSV. No, that's not CTSV, yeah. I'm not, not yeah. sure exactly. Dude, this wood grain in here is really tripping me out. That's a wild choice. It, it was either wood grain or the uh, carbon fiber. But I think yep. the wood grain kind of looked better or nicer. And then even the 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 under lighting is very subtle, you know, yeah. it's not big stripes in your face like limos <laughs> from the 80s, you know. The seats are from a CTSV. Yes. Chopped down. Yes. But you still have all the full adjustability. Back, forward, up, down, yes. You get like lumbar support? Yes. Dude, <laughs> I just liked your car more with my back. I'm telling <laughs> you, I like the idea of a lumbar. Let's go drive this thing, man. This is, dude. Good job, bitchin' hey, car, man. you to kind of dig in a bit, oh, yeah. doesn't it? Oh yeah. It definitely wants input right yeah. away. That, that's one of the hard parts driving it is you usually, it's, it's high idle. Driving it slow is not that, it, it, it's actually harder to drive it. But it sounds really slow. good. Boy, just within seconds of driving too, your whole suspension and chassis platform feels solid. nice <laughs> on here. Yeah, yeah, it does. This might be the first car I've driven that has an LT5. Okay. 
You know they were hard to come by when we ordered this one. We were lucky to find the second one for the other, for the build we're on workout now. Right. I searched for a while and I didn't find that many people building a, a Camaro or a lot of the pro, pro touring using LT5. So you're doing an LT5 in the in the Corvette as well? Yes, yeah, the LT5 as well in the Corvette. Nice. It's pretty ballsy to do a custom 63 split window, man. People... I know. There's so many purists. I know I'll get... Uh... You're going to get a lot of grief <laughs> about that, dude. You're cutting what up? Now, if it was a perfect, immaculate, all original 63 split window, manual, fuely, like all the collectibles. Oh, yeah, no, it is, it, isn't it? it? Is, oh, yeah. no. Uh, oh, no. It was in an accident back in the 60s. I bought all the parts to try to do a full restoration on there. And that's when I, when I finished this, I was like, okay, no way I'm going right restoration when yeah. I have the ability to do a rest on mod. Hey, look, I get it, dude. I, I, I have certain cars to me where it's like, oh man, don't mess with that one. Like a, like a 69 Boss 429 Mustang, right? Yes. If it's, if it's a low mileage clean, I don't know, there was so few of them made. Yes. Split window 63, that's a, that's a, it's on the line of questionable, but I gotta be honest with you too. I've driven a lot of numbers matching original cars. Yes. Because we always used to love all the talk about it. It's like, you know, this is, Two family car and it's this and that and it's got all the great wonderful talking History behind points. There. Yeah. And then you get in and drive it and you're like, well this is no fun. Yeah. You know? It's it's it, you want some of the modern commodities in the in the car vehicle too, right? The handling performance and yeah. That, that, that was my big that was the biggest decision point, especially with uh, being able to have the better brakes uh, for the you know my kids ever dri drive those cars when they get older. I want them to have all the, all those security aspects of it. And I'm it, curious, I didn't ask you, and I'm curious now that I'm driving your car, do you know the rear end gearing on this car? Uh, it's 350 one gear ratio. With that much torque and yeah. a six speed trans, I guess you don't need like a like a 411 rear 411. end or something, yeah. you know. I tell you one thing I like right away is the, your seating position's real nice. This, having this adjustable seat like this, yeah. it's just great, it, 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 like I got in, you know, I went forward slightly. I dropped the back a little bit. I wanted it to sit back a little more. Yeah. Boom, just like that. Super easy adjustments. That's why I like all the modern elements that we do to, to these classic cars. Yeah. They're, you know, they're more fun to drive. They're yes. certainly more comfortable to sit in. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'll say time after time, even the Corvette is whenever I go for a drive and come back with the kids, you're stuck on the seat, your back certain. Yeah, it's, totally. Uh, it, it's a totally uncomfortable. And after I wrote this, like, I think by the second time, we we're like, okay, we're getting the Corvette done the same way. I, I might keep the seats, but I might have them modified. I think Dynamic Corvettes has the adjustable seats now with the uh, the, the factory. So I might try try to do those. And uh, like I said, and I tell you one thing you're going to want, I'm sure you've already figured this one out, the smaller steering wheel. Yes. Because you go with the original seat and the small steering wheel, you're like this, the oh, steering yeah. wheel's almost in your lap. <laughs> I felt like know. a boat sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My dad had a 68 Mustang, and I grew up with those bigger steering wheels, but yes, you, you want something smaller. It is, yeah, it just yeah. feels better, man. Absolutely. It really, it really does. Still not getting used to your, your accelerator pedal, yeah. <laughs> All the little things that'll drive me personally nutty uh -huh. seem addressed here, you know, in, in that like, I mean, the brakes are fantastic on it, light touch, you got all the braking in the world. Where I'm sitting in here is real comfortable. I like where your clutch is set at. The only thing that's tripped me out is the, the feel of the accelerator Clear. pedal. It's just a little, just different than what I'm used to, you know? Yeah, it's, it's very sensitive. Well, it is, and it, but it, but you're also pushing down for a minute before it's coming on, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, gosh, dude, all the all the things that drive me crazy about the all original, what we were just talking about, the yes. pure true classics, have been addressed, and and that's why I love the world of pro touring and resto mod cars. Blank Slate. Blank Slate. That was the original name of this car was Blank Slate. And then when he took... <laughs> hey, where's the window? There it is. Sorry, dude. See ya. <laughs>
boy, you can sure tell this car has all the power. I mean, you know how mild I'm being yeah. on it, right? Yeah. I did try a few times to even do a 50% throttle, trying to just, it, it, I mean, it cuts loose right away. Like, Dude, I believe it. With that kind of power in here, no question. So the Camaro and the Corvette, those are your two favorite yeah, cars. Yes, favorite build, yeah, favorite cars. Growing up, always wanted a Camaro 69. There was a neighbor that owned one, and I just kept telling myself I'll get one. And Corvette was the same thing, and, and my, my kids are now the same way. My youngest likes the Camaro, and my oldest is getting the Corvette. And I was like, wow, that's perfect. I get both my cars, I can enjoy them there while I'm alive, and then they get to take them over when, you know, the time comes. Dude, that's so cool as a kid, though, to get this passed down to you and the Corvette passed down to you. Yeah. I mean, man. Woo. Boy, it wants immediate input down at the lower RPM. Oh, yeah. This car's pretty bitching. I gotta be honest with you, man. This is really a slick car. It took me a little bit of getting used to again. I got a, some modern cars as well, and you know, those are real responsive, and you adjust to it, right? I mean, especially if you have modern performance cars. Yeah. I don't care how good these are built. I'm sorry, the modern performance cars are gonna outperform it. And yeah. it's going to be easier to do it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I've been in plenty of GT3s. I've driven McLaren 720s and, you know, some pretty bonkers stuff where you're like, it's way too easy to be going way too fast. Yeah. You know. You, you can't even tell on some of the modern cars. But, like, this is never going to be able to do what those do. Yeah. Those will never be able to do what this does. Yeah. And you I've, can feel it here. You can feel every single, I mean, horsepower, or whether you're accelerating, going over something. It's just so much more of an analog experience, you know? Absolutely, yes. If you pull up in this and someone pulls up next to you in a modern McLaren, Ferrari, Lamborghini, whatever it is, yes. more people are checking out this. Yeah. at this point is you guys have noticed some changes in how we're shooting and how we're editing. I hope you're appreciating the more cinematic view we're giving of vehicles. I genuinely enjoy this Camaro. I think it's a really well-built get in it and go drive it and enjoy it car. A massive thanks to Geo for bringing this out and allowing us to shoot it today. Of course, a huge thanks to my pal Dean. 
here at SoCal Classic Car Storage giving us a second home away from home. And a massive thanks to you guys for hanging and watching what we do, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, man, later.